The process of landing on Mars was always an incredibly complex and challenging technical feat. Methods such as using giant airbags or sky crane systems, though creative, are not yet the optimal solutions for landing humans on the planet's surface. So NASA has developed a groundbreaking landing system for the Red Planet, incorporating and processing data from SpaceX in a completely different approach from what was traditionally expected. Surprisingly, this solution may not be directly related to Starship. However, these studies will provide crucial info about the technical requirements that Starship will need to meet when it finally reaches Mars. Let's find out more on today's episode of Alpha Tech. Before delving into NASA's newly unveiled method for getting to Mars, it's essential to first grasp the challenges of touching down on this distant planet. Landing on Mars presents a set of challenges that are unlike those faced on Earth or the Moon, primarily due to its thin atmosphere. Mars's atmosphere is denser than the Moon's, but much thinner than Earth's, which creates a Goldilocks problem for landing. The thin atmosphere on Mars is too sparse to support Earth-like landing techniques that rely on atmospheric drag such as parachutes or aerodynamic braking. The Red Planet's atmosphere is extremely thin, less than 1% as dense as Earth's. Terminal velocity on Mars reaches an astonishing speed of nearly 1,000 km an hour, four times faster than Earth's. This means that atmospheric braking alone is insufficient to slow down a spacecraft. Leading space agencies around the world, including NASA, European Space Agency, and especially Russia, have faced this challenge repeatedly. During their efforts, they experienced multiple failures, even when attempting to land spacecraft on the Martian surface. Just recently have breakthroughs been achieved in addressing these challenges. A key issue that further complicates landing on Mars is the supersonic transition problem. Retropropulsion, where engines are fired backward to slow the spacecraft during descent, is a common method for landing on the moon. However, NASA initially believed that retropropulsion could only work effectively at subsonic speeds below the speed of sound. The challenge with Mars is that during descent, the spacecraft is traveling at supersonic speeds when it first enters the atmosphere. NASA was concerned that firing engines at these high speeds could destabilize the spacecraft as shock fronts would form around the vehicle, potentially causing significant turbulence or overheating. The shock from the engine plume could also damage the spacecraft, making retropropulsion seem impractical for Mars landings. Given these challenges, the idea of landing heavy payloads or even humans on Mars seems almost impossible. The combined difficulties of Mars's thin atmosphere and the supersonic transition problem mean the traditional approaches used for Earth and the Moon are simply ineffective, leaving engineers with few viable options. However, recent advancements in propulsion technology, particularly SpaceX's experiments with retropropulsion, have begun to challenge these long-standing assumptions, offering new hope for overcoming these obstacles. This breakthrough was recently revealed by Rob Manning, the engineer at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Of course, for SpaceX, sharing technical knowledge is something they strongly support. This collaboration led NASA and SpaceX to jointly monitor SpaceX's Falcon 9 experiments through Propulsion Descent Technology Project from 2014 to 2017. To gather critical data, SpaceX's Falcon 9 boosters were outfitted with specialized instruments during reentry burns. These tools captured key metrics like aerodynamic forces, thermal behavior, and dynamic pressures that closely resembled conditions on Mars. NASA used advanced techniques including aerodynamic modeling, flight reconstructions, and thermal imaging to analyze these burns in detail. By studying the interaction of retropropulsion within the atmosphere, the project provided unparalleled insights into supersonic descent dynamics. During its routine reentry burns in Earth's atmosphere, Falcon 9 provided a unique opportunity to study supersonic retropropulsion, a critical technique for future Mars landings. These burns simulated the dynamics of entering Mars's thin atmosphere at high speeds, offering valuable insights without the need for dedicated Mars-specific tests. One of the biggest discoveries was the behavior of shock fronts created by the rocket engine's plume during supersonic reentry. Contrary to prior assumptions that these shock fronts would destabilize or damage a spacecraft, the data revealed that they form a protective bubble around the vehicle. This bubble reduces turbulence and heat, enabling a safer and more stable descent. The outcomes of this collaboration were transformative. The data collected not only validated the feasibility of supersonic retropropulsion, but also offered a clear path for adapting Falcon 9's reentry techniques to Mars's unique environment. This foundational work has been instrumental in shaping NASA's strategies for developing human landing systems and advancing plans for crewed missions to the Red Planet. However, many unresolved issues remain when it comes to landing a crewed mission on Mars. 
Manning noted that there are still numerous unknowns, including how a large spacecraft like a starship would be navigated and then flown through Mars's atmosphere. The planet's thin atmosphere, while sufficient to create complications, isn't dense enough to significantly slow down a descending vehicle. Steering Starship through such an environment is complex as its aerodynamic surfaces, like fins, may be ineffective at hypersonic speeds in Mars's tenuous air. This raises critical questions about how to maintain stability and control during descent. Additionally, the Martian atmosphere frequently hosts dust storms which can reduce visibility, disrupt navigation, and increase thermal heating during entry. Wind shears, a sudden change in wind speed or direction, could destabilize a larger vehicle like Starship, making controlled landings even more precarious. These atmospheric factors amplify the difficulty of landing safely and reliably. Once on the surface, Starship's massive engines pose another issue. During touchdown, the thrust could significantly kick up amounts of debris from the rocky Martian terrain, potentially damaging the engines. This debris could also jeopardize the vehicle's reusability for return missions. Designing effective protection systems for the engines is essential, as is engineering landing legs robust enough to stabilize a spacecraft of starship size on Mars's uneven and unpredictable surfaces. Beyond the landing itself, infrastructure development on Mars presents logistical hurdles. Establishing durable landing pads to mitigate dust and debris is crucial but requires resources and planning. Similarly, creating systems to refuel starships for return journeys, whether through in-situation resource utilization or pre-supplied materials, is another challenge. The timing of Mars' launch windows further complicates progress. Due to the planet's orbit, mission opportunities arise only every 26 months. This limits the ability to iterate on designs and strategies quickly, meaning any failures could delay advancements by years. Overcoming these constraints requires careful planning, robust technology, and patience to ensure every attempt is as prepared as possible. Now, let's review some of NASA's Mars missions that have achieved significant milestones. From here, we can further reinforce the belief in SpaceX's achievable ambitions soon. The first successful landing on Mars happened in July of 1976 when NASA's Viking 1 lander touched down. The massive 1,270-pound lander dropped down from an orbiting mothership to make a three-point landing using a parachute and rocket engine. Viking 1's three biology experiments found no clear evidence of Mars microbes. The lander was powered by a plutonium decay-powered radioisotope thermoelectric generator and went silent in November of 1982 six years after completing its initial 90-day mission. Soon after Viking 1's success, NASA landed on Mars again in September of 1976 with Viking 2. In July of 1997, NASA celebrated the United States' Independence Day in its own unique way by landing the first Mars rover, the Mars Pathfinder lander, along with a small rover Sojourner on the Red Planet. Next, the success of the Mars Pathfinder and Sojourner rover led to a bolder and larger landing on Mars in January of 2004 when NASA's golf cart-sized Spirit rover bounced and came to rest inside the Vaskusev crater. NASA's twin rover to Spirit, the Opportunity rover, landed in January of 2004. Although it was expected to last only 90 days on Mars' surface, the rover actually survived for more than 5,100 days. The rover lost contact with NASA after a dust storm on Mars, and the mission was declared over in 2019. Phoenix Lander touched down in May of 2008 using some equipment and tools salvaged from the lost Mars Polar Lander mission. NASA's flagship Curiosity rover completed an unprecedented sequence of complex landings in August of 2012, successfully performing a sky crane maneuver and parachute deployment to land on the surface of the Gale Crater. NASA's InSight lander landed on Mars on November of 2018, allowing the first spacecraft devoted to probing Mars's interior to begin work. The mission measured numerous Mars quakes and helped gather data to better understand the formation of Mars and other rocky planets. The mission ended in December of 2022. The only failure of that mission was a mole or heat probe that was designed to move under the surface. Harder than expected, Regolith frustrated more than two years of efforts to dig more than a few inches. NASA abandoned the attempt in early 2021. NASA's ambitious Perseverance rover touched down on Mars on February 18, 2021. The car-sized rover is the most advanced robot ever sent to Mars. Perseverance, or Percy as it's commonly referred to, is busy looking for signs of ancient microbial life 
to advance NASA's quest to explore the past habitability of Mars. Percy didn't travel to Mars alone. It was accompanied by Ingenuity, a Mars helicopter attached to the rover's underside during landing. Ingenuity went on to make an impressive 72 historic flights, becoming the first aircraft to achieve powered, controlled flight on another planet. Its final flight took place on January 18, 2024, when rotor blade damage brought its mission to an end. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.